Uh, Lisa Pat McDaniel is going to uh, speak to the housing issue. Um, Lisa, since 2011, has been the Director of Community Development for the Ohio Capital Corporation for Housing. In that capacity, she's working with cities and towns, even rural, on much smaller places than Tiffin, on how to deal with housing and, and kind of bringing, bringing fresh housing back into communities, whether that's through rehab, new infill construction, affordable market rate, and so forth. So there's a variety of types of housing, and I think she's going to speak to that. Uh, prior, prior to that, uh, uh, her current position, Lisa spent uh, 20 years plus with... Uh, started at 12. She started at 12, working for the, uh, the Ohio Department of Development, where she uh, ended her path there as the, uh, as the director of, of the Ohio Department of Development. So we're honored to have Lisa here tonight. She serves on every board in the state of Ohio, I've come to find out. But we're on one of those together, which happens to be the Heritage Ohio Board of Trustees. So she's very intimately aware of and very comfortable with the Main Street strategies, and I think her comments will be very targeted and appropriate for Tiffin. So please welcome Lisa Patrick in. I'm going to talk about housing in downtown. I'm also going to talk a little bit about infill housing and a little bit about rehabilitating housing stock that you currently have because those are really all important options. Housing is extremely important, but it's more than just housing. I, I don't think you say, hey, I'm going to my house after work. You probably say, do you say that? I hope not. I'm assuming you say, hey, I'm going home. And that's what housing is. Housing is a home. And home matters. Whether that home is a rental property, a single family detached housing, an apartment, a condo, it's still your home. And that home is a platform for a lot of other things you do in your life. If you could imagine not having a stable, pleasant, home that you made yourself, made your own, and think about not having that and having to go to work, provide for your family, have financial stability, a whole host of things all start by having a nice, pleasant, stable home. And communities, vibrant communities, have homes across the continuum of places. Some type in that continuum, which every community needs the full continuum, as much as the demand is there in their particular community. So we start with rental properties. You know, rental, when you think of rental, you're thinking of apartments probably, but a rental is more than property, more than apartments. It also can be single family detached. It could be townhomes. It could also be studios and lofts which are really different than what you think of when you think of a traditional apartment. Oh, it's this one, that's why. Okay, thank you. Now I got the right buttons. Oh, okay, so um, the next uh, kind of group of housing you have to have is you need to have opportunities for home ownership. And I know there's a lot written about whether home ownership is still an option that is worth pursuing for people and whether young people into the future are going to want to own their homes. But there will always be a portion, and probably when millennials like my daughter, who just graduated from Ohio University on Saturday, someday she probably will want to own a home for a part of her life. So when you know that you need to have home ownership in a community, you need different types to meet people where they are. You need affordable housing. And I don't want you, I say affordable housing because I know if I say housing for different incomes, I, I know sometimes we have a vision in our head and it's not a pleasant vision. But I'm talking about well-kept, well-maintained, affordable home, entry-level homes, first-time home buyer homes. Typically people aren't going from an apartment to the nearest mansion. So, right, so we need homes that probably like the home my husband and I first bought until we had two children and had to sell our dining room furniture. So um, maybe some of you have had that. And then you also, you need market rate homes that, are, that attract various markets from middle income and on up because people want choices. Another way to think about as continuum, a home continuum, or housing continuum, is a life cycle continuum. And I think I've pointed to that in, in talking about this. You know, you have young adults who probably right now don't want 
to own a home. Uh, they want, they need to be mobile. Um, they may be changing jobs. They may, may be moving communities. We hope that they don't. I think what we're here to talk about are ways in which Tiffin would be a place you could spend your whole career in, but people will probably be moving. You need to have housing that accommodates families, whether it's owner or rental. And then you need to have housing that maybe appeals to you experienced adults like me, who uh, perhaps are getting near retirement or empty nesters. Uh, you know, my 2,400 square foot house is uh, too much of my time to clean, and I want to live somewhere else. And then we also have to think about, at some point, you know, options for seniors. Uh, housing that is completely accessible, housing that's affordable, housing in community so that people aren't spending their elder years alone, housing that may be service enriched with activities and access to health care and things like that. So when you think about you know, downtown and the whole community of Tiffin, you have to think about uh, these types of housing. I'm going to start, though, by talking about downtown housing because I think there's a lot of opportunity. And I know you may think, this isn't New York City or this isn't Cleveland where there's you know, extreme high demand for housing or, or Columbus or Cincinnati. But actually, um, many of the small towns in Ohio, smaller towns, because actually I wouldn't consider Tiffin a small town for Ohio. <laughs> I would probably consider it um, a third tier city. Um, but a lot of uh, cities your size uh, are seeing young adults who are staying in their communities wanting to have access still to places that are cool and hip and walkable. Uh, this quote is from a report uh, by a gentleman by the name of Don Ripkema. He's um, a celebrity in Main Street communities. He, he does a lot of that. Overstating it? No, it probably isn't. And he's done several uh, reports on Main Street, following the Main Street program and what it does for um, communities and the economic impact. And a, a report he did for Michigan, he said, while an empty storefront is a drain on the economy, no lights on upstairs is equally depressing. So when you go through um, downtowns and you can see that there are things downtown you know, the coffee shops and the insurance company and Edward Jones and all of those things. But when you look up, it's as if you were looking at a mouth that was talking, but the eyes are shut. Right? There's no life, like no soul. You think of a building like a face, the upstairs is where the eyes are, and it's like no soul. So you want to be able to do things, and sometimes those buildings can accommodate commercial and office, but also um, cool living spaces is another thing that can be... Uh, just as an example, um, in um, Don Rukuma's report that he did for Michigan, uh, he pointed out this particular fact that one couple residing in a downtown apartment uh, paying about $750 a month, which may be about right or may be a little higher or low here in Tiffin, but imagine if they were living in an apartment paying $750 a month, could have an annual economic impact on that downtown of over $18,000 annually, assuming that they can get access in the downtown and in the adjacent neighborhoods to the goods and services they need. And that's not everything they would be spending. It's kind of the key things they would be spending. So if you think about that, and you think about the economic impact of having you know, 20 couples or 20 households uh, living downtown with that, spending that kind of money annually, it adds up. And that kind of spending is also what attracts businesses more into the downtown because they know they can get a piece of that spending. So housing in downtown and in the neighborhoods immediately walkable to downtown um, really uh, can have a major economic development. Here are some examples perhaps um, in a community you would see as more close to Tiffin. So this is uh, a building in Worcester, Ohio. How many of you are familiar with Worcester where the cows go, muh? <laughs> yeah, it's not Worcester. I've been corrected a million times. It's muh, Worcester. So Worcester is similar to Tiffin in that you know, it has uh, the College of Worcester. 
It also has a major Ohio State facility, agricultural facility there. So there are lots of students. They aren't necessarily right in downtown. They're several blocks off. Uh, Worcester is the longest running Main Street program in the state of Ohio, the most successful. The woman who is the Main Street manager will probably like go to her grave being the Main Street manager. I mean, she's the godmother of all Main Street in Ohio. Her name is Sandra Hall. And um, there has been a lot of housing development in downtown and around downtown, including condo development. Um, this particular building is um, been developed by uh, Washington Properties, a gentleman by the name of Mike Rose. He has worked uh, in Worcester, um, Medina, I'm going to show you a property in Medina, Orville, and Port Clinton are kind of the areas he's been working. And he tends to take this size of a building to develop it. In this building, a typical apartment, and they are more apartments, has one bedroom, one bath, it's 711 square feet. I feel like I'm on HGTV. Do any of you watch HGTV? And it rents, um, I mean, the rent is a pretty reasonable rent. Um, I, I don't know if this is reasonable for Tiffin, um, but I would think this would be pretty reasonable, $665 a month. Uh, there was only one um, available property, or available apartment in this property. Now, when I looked, up, I looked it up today, so. Now, this is uh, in Medina. So Medina uh, doesn't have, really have a university. It has many branches of universities in it. But um, Medina is south of Cleveland. It's uh, about the size of Tiffin, um, the proper, Medina proper. It has um, kind of grown to meet the southern suburbs of Cleveland now, where one never would have thought that Medina was a suburb of Cleveland, but it is a little bit now. This is the Highs building, and the S isn't in it. It's not a mistake on my part. It really is Highs building. In this particular property, there are no vacancies. It has been filled, completely filled. Um, but uh, a typical um, apartment here is a two-bedroom, one-bath, 800 square feet, renting for 625 a month. So you know these are very doable design standards. Um, so those historic uh, credits can really bring a lot of um, equity into a project because, yes, these projects do cost money and I understand that, but there are tools that can be used. Um, I also uh, want to talk a little bit about infill housing and housing rehabilitation. So in downtown, you, you typically have buildings, but around the edges of downtown and in the neighborhoods close to downtown, you may have vacant lots. Vacant lots are an opportunity. Um, I know when we have a lot of vacant lots, we start to get very concerned about our values of our housing if we're in a neighborhood with vacant lots. But infill housing is one way to build back up that neighborhood and um, put more housing and give more housing opportunities. This particular uh, house has been designed to fit uh, the neighborhood that it's in. And I believe, as Ted may have said, you know, we're not looking to necessarily replicate exactly the housing that was there or all of the housing types in the neighborhood. What we're looking to do is to put a house that is similar in design and form, but not exact. We're not, we're not trying to rebuild an 1880s house, for example. Here is another one, and I realize these are really a small picture, so you can't get the full uh, view of this one, but it, it's a Cape Cod. So I know uh, when you look at housing that was built in the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, you know, you have a smaller house. There are some really great um, plans for houses that can fit into these kinds of neighborhoods. These houses can also um, be built with the housing tax credit, the low-income housing tax credit. They're affordable housing. They tend to be smaller. They tend to be houses for families, uh, startups, first-time homebuyer houses. And um, there are the 
programs for these at the state level are situated at the Ohio Housing Finance Agency. So if you're interested in hearing more about those types of projects, I'd be happy to explain to you how they work. But in addition to infill housing, we've got to think about the housing we still do have, and many times those housing, those homes, are um, occupied by older residents. And as people get older and they're not working and they go on to Social Security, what happens? The building uh, starts to deteriorate because maybe uh, the, the windows need to be replaced and someone in their 70s may feel like they can't go to the bank now and get um, money to try to fix that. Or maybe more than one or two um, systems in a house go down. Then you start to see deterioration and when that person moves out of that house for whatever reason, um, you have housing that isn't easily resold because so much work needs to go into it. One of the ways to deal with that is to look as, at a community towards doing housing rehabilitation, providing either with state or federal funds, uh, private foundation funds, everybody gets together and creates a fund, to try to help those people maintain that housing while they're still living there. So that at the point that they are moving out of that housing, that housing stock is such that some a younger family would more than be willing to move into that house. And maybe still some updating needs to be done. I mean, we're not talking about going in and redecorating. That is not what we're talking about. We're talking about the bones of the house and trying to maintain the bones of that house. And this is something that many communities overlook. And then when a whole neighborhood of people move on for whatever reason, they're left with a neighborhood of housing that is deteriorated and substandard. And so to be forward thinking as a community, not only do you need to look at all these cool and new things and new infill housing, you need to be thinking about the housing stock you have. So thank you.